Section 8.7, more about graphing quadratic functions. By completing the square, we can rewrite any polynomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c in the form of a times the quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k, and this will allow us to graph any quadratic function. So here's the skinny of transforming, transforming this polynomial. The x coordinate of the vertex ends up being negative b over 2a, taking those coefficients from the squared and the linear term. Plugging that x value into the function will give us the resulting y value so that our vertex ends up being the ordered pair negative b over 2a f of negative b over 2a. This is a cumbersome notation, but we'll look at an example of what that means. Again, we're taking that x value of the vertex, plugging it into the function, and that result is what this is representing for our y coordinate. The axis of symmetry is x equal to the x coordinate of the vertex, so it'll be negative b over 2a. To determine whether a parabola opens upward or not, we use the same relationship of looking at the coefficient on our x squared term. So a parabola will open upward when a is positive, which means it's greater than zero. It will open downward when it is less than zero. Comparing our quadratic functions to the very basic quadratic form of this equation, if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then our parabola will be narrow and head towards infinity much faster. If a is equal to 0, it will be the same. Actually, this should be equal to 1. And if our a, the absolute value of it, is a rational number between 0 and 1, then we have a squatty, much wider, slower to approach infinity than the generic y equals x squared term. For a y-intercept, we let x equal 0, and when we let x equal 0 in our equation, we end up with c for our value. So the point of the y-intercept is at the coordinate 0, c. To determine our x-intercepts, where the parabola will cross the x-axis, it can cross in several possibilities or not at all. And so to find the x-intercept, we let the f of x, which is actually our y equals 0. We can either factor or use the quadratic formula to find our x-intercepts, which are the roots or solutions to the equation, depending on the application of the quadratic formula or equation. But to help us along the way to find the x-intercepts, consider the discriminant, which is the radicand from the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac. If that discriminant is greater than zero, it means that we have two real roots. It could be rational or it could be irrational. If our discriminant is equal to zero, then we have one real root, and it means we only have one intercept. If the discriminant is less than zero, we would have two imaginary conjugates. Well, we're graphing only real numbers, which means in terms of our graph, we would have no x-intercept. The parabola would either open above the x-axis or it would open below the x-axis with no intercept. And in terms of solutions or roots, we would have imaginary conjugates and again means we aren't going to graph those. So let's put this summarized information into practice. In this problem, they're asking us to find the axis of symmetry, the vertex, whether it's wide, narrow, or the same as this generic y equals x squared, and then graph it. 
So we're going to compare this to our quadratic generic function of ax squared plus bx plus c so that we can see that our value of a, the coefficient on our x squared term is negative 1, b is 2, and c is 1. So to get our axis of symmetry and on our way to the vertex, we need to know <clears throat> the value of <coughs> excuse me, negative b over 2a. So it's the opposite of b, so it'll be the opposite of a positive 2, which is negative 2, over 2 times a, which is negative 1. This will give us a negative 2 over negative 2, which results in 1. Plugging that x into the function will give us the associated y value so that we can have the coordinates of the vertex. So replacing x with a 1 and simplifying 1 squared is 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Multiply is 2 plus 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So to identify the vertex, which is negative b over 2a for the x-coordinate, we found a 1. Plugging that value into the function, we found the associated 2. So the vertex of this quadratic function is 1, 2. The axis of symmetry is x equal the x value of our vertex. It always runs through the vertex, so there's our equation for the axis of symmetry. To determine the shape of the parabola, we need to look at a. a is equal to negative 1. Since this is negative, the parabola is going to open downward. That helps us with getting an estimate for the graph. But to answer the question, if we have the absolute value of a being greater than 1, the graph will be narrow. Well, when we plug in a negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. That is not greater than 1. It's equal to 1, which means it's going to be the same shape as the y equals x squared form. One other point just to graph this and is needed because we can use the reflexive property about the axis of symmetry. A very easy point to find is the y-intercept, which generically is the coordinate 0, c. And on this quadratic function, c was 1. So we have the point 0, 1. So taking these components, let's make a graph for this quadratic function. We have a vertex at 1, 2. The axis of symmetry is running through the vertex. It's at the line x equals 1, a vertical line. We also know that we have a y-intercept of 0, 1. Because we are one away from our axis of symmetry, we can, through reflexive, find another point, and we could verify that if we let x equal 2, plug it in, we should find that it has a value of 1. Connecting these with a smooth line, we have our parabola. Now, where they're intersecting on the x-axis for the x-intercepts aren't exact here, but the problem is not asking us for that just yet. We'll take a look at another problem in the future to have exact values. But our parabola is opening downward as we expected. We have identified our vertex at the point 1, 2, our axis is symmetry. We have one point that we reflected to get a second point for a general shape for this problem. Let's look at another problem that's asking the same information. Find the axis of symmetry vertex and the shape of it. 
as well as graphing it. So comparing this, ax squared plus bx plus c, we have a of 2, b of 4, c of negative 3. We can find the x-coordinate of the vertex by taking the opposite of b, which is going to be a negative 4 over 2 times a, which is a 2. We end up with a negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. To find the corresponding y, we will plug or replace x with negative 1 into our quadratic function. Powers first, negative 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2. Multiplying next, we get a negative 4. Simplifying, 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 or plus a negative 3 is negative 5. So our vertex, which is negative b over 2a for our x, f of that value gave us a negative 5. The axis of symmetry is x equal the x value of the vertex. To determine which way this parabola opens, we'll look at a. a is 2. It's positive. That means it's going to open upward. And in terms of shape compared to the standard basic y equals x squared, since the absolute value of a greater than 1 means the parabola is narrow, and that happens to be the case, the absolute value of 2 is 2 would be greater than 1, we know that this will be narrower compared to the basic form of y equals x squared. One more piece of information to pull off this quadratic function to graph it is to find the y-intercept, which means we're letting x equal 0, resulting in the ordered pair 0c, which is a negative 3. So starting with the vertex, negative 1, negative 5, we have a y-intercept of 0, negative 3. Our axis of symmetry is x equal negative 1, so it's falling through here. We always draw that with a dashed line since it really isn't a solution to the quadratic equation, but is used to help us graph. And because we are 1 away at this height, we will be 1 away on the opposite side of our axis of symmetry. And again, in this graph, all I'm doing is drawing this smooth curve of the points we have. Where those exact x-intercepts are, I don't know unless I use factoring or quadratic formula to actually determine those. But a good representation of our function, it is narrower than the standard y equals x squared headed towards infinity faster. Our vertex is a minimum.